Lifeboat, the most popular server of 2015, gaining over 60,000 concurrent players. That is more than the Mindplex player peak. But today, it is only a shell of what it once was. Many YouTubers, staff members, quickly grew to hate on the server in later years. But why? To answer this question, we need to go and look back the whole history of Lifeboat. The two founders of the server was William TDR and Ethan, aka TNT Lover Law. They showcased the server for the very first time on March 2013. Hello, this is a demonstration video for a is our um, survival game server for population based off the Minecraft PvP um, server. The server was running on Ethan's computer. It wasn't until six days later when it would be released to the public for a beta test. Lifeboat during this time had no lobby, no signs to join. There weren't even chests to get. You had to make your own weapons and armor. And since there was no signs, you had to join Lifeboat Server A, Lifeboat Server B, Server C, Server D, etc. with different IP addresses. It wasn't until later when they added a glass box above the arena with chests in the middle. You know, the usual thing. It was also during this time when the emergence of hackers began to terrorize the server, laying the foundations of the server's fate in upcoming years. On June 6, 2013, the release of Minecraft 0.7.0 added Realms, a new way to enter a server. Before, you can only join if you either have an Android or a jailbroken phone using Terminal. But now, with the help of Pocket Mine Realms, joining servers has become much easier. How it works is that you need to download a Pocket Mine profile. Now, Pocket Mine can modify the realms so that you can play without payment. Put in the IP address, and boom, server list. Lifeboat slowly grew as not much people knew servers for Pocket Edition, so it was spread by mouth. During this time, Lifeboat got its first lobby. It was a floating sandstone island with a fountain in the middle. It was small and simple, but it's a start. On update 0.7.4, Minecraft finally added external servers option, which means there is no difficulty in joining a server at last. Lifeboat updated their lobby again into a gigantic indoor building with huge sign, which would later be an inspiration for a huge lobby later on. The golden age was between 2014 to 2016. These years were huge and record-breaking player counts would take place. In 2014, Lifeboat would change their lobby to four seasons, a smaller but more detailed lobby. A lot of known YouTubers during this time started to play the server. YouTubers such as Jack Frost Miner, I Can Fly Jake, and NexiPL boosted the server's reputation even outside of Pocket Edition. In 2015, the server again changed into its most iconic lobby of all time, Massive Lobby. This lobby was the most famous lobby most people know, which added secret rooms. Lifeboat had the best experience at the time compared to other servers, and it was no longer just a server to play, but a place to hang out, meet new friends, even find girlfriends. There was even clubs in the secret rooms and parties. People would roleplay and do. The lobby would even have more players than survival games itself. Lifeboat set the world record for most players in a Minecraft server. Lifeboat was on top of the world and nothing could go wrong, right? But it did. In late 2015, Lifeboat lost their owner. William TDR. Every update up to this point, every lobby, system, even how the staff were hired was by William. His co-owner, TNT Lover Lol, left during the early days, so William was the last one left. He quit to reach his dreams. He gave his server to his dad, Rain TDR. This decision would be Lifeboat's downfall, as Rain didn't care much about the server or its players. He didn't form it out of his own hands like William had. No, he only wanted one thing, and that 
was money. And just like that, the Hydreon Corporation was born, taking full force on the server. The lobby would change into Lifeboat Paradise, the first lobby under Hydreon's control. The change was slow, and many of the player base didn't even know about the new ownership or didn't care. What's funny is that the lobby about Paradise is a lobby that is most controlled. Lifeboat would release VIP rank which would add extra armor and weapons to survival games. This was the first signs of pay to win. Lifeboat would stay at its peak for two years after William left. However, behind the scenes, Rain was planning something, something big. In 2017, Lifeboat changed their lobby twice, one with a boat port and one with a huge portal. This year started to decline players. However, Lifeboat was still better than their competitors. One of the causes of decline was the ban of teaming. Before, you could team with anyone during a match. However, by adding teams game mode, you are randomly teamed with someone you don't want. It removed the freedom of choice. However, this wasn't the end. In the Better Together update, Lifeboat became a featured server. With all this power, Rain began his exploitation and added cosmetics. So many cosmetics. Like it's ridiculous. Like what is this? One million mine coins? That's like five thousand dollars. Who would pay for that? People are also shadow banned, which means people can't see your messages. How are you supposed to hang out now? This server became more glitchy and laggy than ever before. You can't even PvP anymore. What is this? The staff even tried to voice out with the wrongs of the server, but they ended up getting fired. They don't even listen to their own team. But it gets worse. They removed their lifetime. VIP for all who had it and changed it to a monthly based VIP. They became EA, bruh. Lifeboat anti cheat is broken and so many hackers like the server until it's not funny anymore. They added the last and current lobby, the most boring of them all. They wouldn't even add new updates and the games became boring and boring. Nah, but the worst part in April of 2020, Lifeboat removed survival game, the literal core of the server game mode that started its existence. Lifeboat legit it was named LBSG, but without the SG, Lightboat has an identity crisis! In the end, whose fault is it? We could point fingers all day, but we can't deny that Lifeboat, as we know and love, is gone. It has become worse for us and worse for Hydreon. We have to realize that Lifeboat isn't the same anymore and we have to move on. However, that doesn't mean Lifeboat was always bad. Lifeboat will always be one of the greats. All the memories we had, we will cherish in our hearts. All of the fun experiences, friends that will never meet again, and the trust and betrayals, the funs and laughs, and the lobbies. This part of Minecraft history has made many childhoods, many fun stories to tell, and all the fun time to look back on the simpler times. Boat.